Here in South Texas, District 15 has until this moment been solidly blue, in large part due to Latino voters. But now, in the state's most competitive U.S. House race, a MAGA Republican named Monica de la Cruz has flipped this seat. Introducing my mom and your next congresswoman. It's a historic moment at a curious intersection. She's the first Latina to represent the Latino majority district, but also the first Republican ever to win this seat. El sueño americano is alive and well in South Texas! De La Cruz is a descendant of Mexican immigrants who's campaigned on some pretty extreme views. So she's against abortion, even in cases of rape and incest. And she centered her entire campaign around border security, criminalizing undocumented immigrants and claiming that she wanted to, quote, finish what Trump started. Our top issue is border security, the right to bear arms. But because that, that's, that's my bread and butter. You know what I mean? We live that life. Who's going to defend us? Definitely not these opponents. I know Monica would. I know because I've spoken to her directly. I've reported on these border cities for years, and similar to what our reporting found among some conservative Latinos in the border town of El Paso, Texas, De La Cruz has even pushed the Great Replacement Theory, baselessly and dangerously stating in one campaign email that Democrats are actively allowing undocumented immigrants to come to the U.S. in order to win their votes. De La Cruz beat her Democratic opponent, Michelle Vallejo, by approximately eight points. Vallejo is in many ways her antithesis, a Bernie Sanders-endorsed progressive who bet on a completely different message to win this district. She championed Medicare for all, raising the minimum wage, demilitarizing border communities, and promised to fight for reproductive access, especially in a post row America. Just hours before polls closed, we asked Vallejo what the prospect of a De La Cruz win means. If it ends up being that this district bets for the candidate that wants more of a border wall, right, that is even pushing conspiracy theories, what will that tell you about voters in this que district? Que la lucha sigue, that we keep fighting. Uh, there's nothing that could come out of this election that won't keep us going forward. So whether we win or whether we lose, I know that my community is going to keep fighting for what's right. Even though De La Cruz won and Governor Greg Abbott was reelected. Republicans didn't cement the so-called red wave they were hoping to accomplish in great part through Latino voters. Vote red! As usual, the Latino vote is complicated, right, and it's nuanced. For instance, Better O'Rourke's performance along the heavy Latino Rio Grande Valley was way better than expected. Some of the voters we met actually split their ticket. Like, we just want a positivity change, whoever it is, whether it be Democrats or Republicans, as long as there's a better future, I'm okay with it. Yet in Uvalde County, which is over 70% Latino, Governor Abbott not only won, but he appears to have made some gains despite the governor's inaction on gun reform after the massacre at Robb Elementary. And while Latinos propelled Governor Ron DeSantis' red tsunami in Florida, Latinos in the battleground states of Nevada, of Arizona, and Georgia could still save the Senate for Democrats. The Texas 15th race is evidence of the investment Republicans made here with Latino voters, but seen in the larger context of the country, it's also a sign that there is no such thing as one Latino narrative and that neither Trump's hardline messaging nor his racist and anti-immigrant conspiracy theories are a golden ticket to victory. I'm Michael Learmont, Editor-in-Chief of Vice News. Too often, traditional news outlets shy away from the real stories and experiences of those living through global conflicts, not Vice News. Our reporters are on the ground, fearlessly covering the human stories that shape our world. You and millions of others can continue to read, watch, and listen to Vice News for free. But we hope you'll consider making a one-time or ongoing contribution of any size at vice.com slash contribute. Every contribution, no matter how big or small, helps support the journalism Vice News brings to you every day. Thank you.